Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode on the Resto Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. And this week we are back at the Toylander. And I have it covered up here because it's time for a big reveal. Last episode, what I had done was flip the Land Rover on its top, really, upside down. And I had painted the bottom of the Toylander with the Hammerite just to protect the bottom because I didn't need to use a colour coat. But I've got some colour matched paint which I have matched to the Land Rover and I'll show you that now. And I've put the top coat on the Toylander. Now just the colour coat, there's been no lacquer or anything put on at this stage. But time for a big reveal. Let's get the cover off and have a look at what it looks like. There we go. Doesn't it look great? I'm just going to lift the camera now, down now and have a quick tour. Have a round look at some of the details and then we'll go from there. So this has been painted in RAL1015, which I got made up in a local motor factors, and thanks very much to them. Um, this is meant to be Land Rover limestone, which is matched to the wheels of the Land Rover um, that I got powder coated fairly recently. And I think you'll agree that it's a, or it's both in shot. Good enough match. This is maybe slightly paler and this is maybe slightly more of a honey colour, but I'm very pleased as to how it's turned out. So what I've done is I've painted all the exterior panels and I've started in some of the interior panels. As you can see, I haven't quite got the floor color covered or some of all of the interior panels are not quite covered to the, the colour density as I've been hoping for. So I'm just going to insert a little bit of clip here to show me putting the first coat on the outside. So hopefully that little clip came through okay. Um, I was quite excited just to get on with this. Um, so I hope you'll understand that I bombed on and got some paint on without necessarily making a video in between. Now, other things that I've been doing in the meantime is researching parts for the Toylander. A major part of the, the look of the Toylander is gonna to be its face or its front grille. So you're gonna have two headlamps, which are, I've always kept the marker spots here just so I know where they are. And there's also gonna be the grille and lights out, out, sorry, lights. Um, sorry, I was gonna say lights out in the wings, but of course not series two, it's series one, 80 inch, so no, there won't be lights out in the wings. Lights here. Um, there's also gonna be the closing panel for the front chassis, which you know I made a bit of a mess of in a couple of videos ago, so that's gonna be painted silver, as it's gonna be the chassis. And this little um, sill here is also gonna be painted silver. So this is just, some of the paint I got made up. Um, so I've run out, actually used four cans, 10 pounds each, 40 pounds, which I think is gonna actually give them really good color coverage. Just need to finish the inside and tidy up in around the engine bay as well. But to do that, I'm gonna to have to put the whole thing up on its side and I'm gonna to need to put a sheet down just to protect the bodywork that's already been done. Once that's done, it's all gonna need rubbed down with very fine sandpaper, probably, I don't know, 250, 500 grit, something really fine anyway. Um, and then it's gonna need lacquered. So there's quite a few steps to go here. Um, I've gotten a bit ahead of myself as well because all of these still need covered in PVA glue, primed and color coded, so I'm still a little ways off. Other things I've been looking into are the metal trims that go around sort of the rear bodywork. Those are equivalent of the galvanized cappings in the real full-size Land Rover. So those are on, well, I haven't ordered those yet, but I know where to get them. Um, I have ordered the little covers for these holes. Um, those are the motor closing panels, and those are just soffit covers like you would have underneath the roof of your house. Um, this little hole here is gonna need covers, so I'm gonna get, try and get some black acrylic and then sand it flat so it's a bit matte and do the same in the front panel. So lots of little details coming together at the minute. And then the bodywork will be largely finished. Of course, the windscreen as well. All those panels I found on eBay rather than buying the branded stuff off Toylander themselves. You can save a significant amount of money. And I think it's more fun, although it does take a bit more work. So the next stage of this I want to show you is putting in the headlamp holes. And these are going to be done with a hole saw. And what I've done is my brother-in-law, who's a joiner by trade, has very kindly lent me his hole saw kit. I've used the hole saw only once before when I was cutting the hole to put the overdrive in my own Land Rover. 
The whole saw itself is like a big metal cup, which fits on this arbor, and then there's a drill bit down the middle just to make sure it anchors and doesn't disappear off across the workpiece. He obviously has a selection because he uses them day to day. I need this one. This is a 79 mil size. I think Toyland themselves recommend 81. Um, for the cost of buying a new bit, I can probably just file out the last two millimeters, which is only maybe one either way. And to be honest, I doubt that the tolerance is going to be that tight. But I find the correct headlamps so they will fit in with this hole. So let's get started with that and see how we get on. So just before I start, slight disclaimer, I did do this one off camera um, purely because I didn't want to make a fool of myself, but now time to do this one live on YouTube, well, as live as a recording can be, and I'll show you how it is. I think I'm really working at the maximum capacity of my drill with this, but that's the setup I'm using. So here goes nothing. And there we go, two headlamp holes cut in the front panel. And I'm really pleased with that. I think it looks really well. It's starting to look like a Land Rover Series 1. Now I think I really was pushing the drill a bit there and capacity wise. Interesting how hot that gets, see how charred that edge is. Um, I didn't really want to use any sort of oil or lubricant on it because I would only be using WD-40 which contains silicone which would then mess up any future painting. So. I just did it dry, so maybe that's something to think of in the future. Now I'm going to take this panel off. I kept it on there for bracing purposes. Take it off, have to PVA the inside of it, and then prime and paint it, as well as this. But in order to do that, I need my little table, because I don't mind if it gets painted or glued or whatever. So, as the only real surface I have to store the Land Rover is on the bonnet of my own Land Rover. So I'm just going to have to remove that little spare wheel spike here and then put the Toylander up there on top of a sheet and then that will clear some space to get some PVA priming done on top of my little picnic table which I've been using as a workbench. So let's get that done now and get on with the next stage. And there we have it, a Toylander on a Land Rover. Front panel off and now the table is ready to be used. So I'm going to get a bit of a sheet over here. This is quite dusty and gluey. Got it covered up, you know, sand these down, set them up here and get a coat of PVA on them. Moving along nicely. So skipping forward a day or two, um, here are some of the panels. Um, I've just set these over um, as a bit of comparison. This side has been PVA'd and this side has not. Um, so you can just notice how the PVA really darkens down the wood tones. Um, next job is really to turn this over, PVA this side, this side, all these ones. This now, I think I have PVA'd the back of this twice. Um, I've sort of lost track of it a little bit. Thankfully, I didn't get any PVA in the front face. So the job for this, as I'm actually running out of space, I'm probably going to have to clear the workbench PVA on that and then spray the inside face of the grill with a bit of primer. And then the next job is, you might have just noticed this, is going to be the grill. Um, Toylander themselves do sell this, but once again, I've decided to go the, my own way and ordered some mesh of eBay. And as again, in the interests of longevity, I'm using stainless steel. So I think this was about 11 pounds for this um, 30 by 30 centimeter mesh. So I'm gonna cut that down to size, sort of like an inverted T shape, goes around here. Um, cut it down to size and then I have to drill little countersunk holes to, for split pins to hold this in place. And I really want to get the holes drilled before um, I paint it just to make sure they're all sealed. Other things I'm going to do is make sure the holes are drilled to hold the two rear seat panels in and the closing panel and also for the seat base. Mainly because I want to get the PVA right down into the glue hole so that every bit of wood is sealed as, as much as possible. Um, I really have the feeling that this Toylander is going to be sort of nearly a family heirloom if I can really build it to a very high quality 
and keep corrosion away and keep rot as far away as well. So let's get on with that and we'll catch you up in a little second. And very completely unintentionally, I've created this very cool outline of a Series 1 grill. But there you go. Got the glued all dried and this is now sitting nicely in primer. I know I haven't filled in all these little bits here. Um, this is going to be hidden from view and it's going to be colour coded and I just have a horrible fear that the more I do to this the bigger a mess I'm going to make and it's a really complicated panel to have to make again so I'm reluctant to start filling sanding and the whole process again. Yes, I know I've left the inside of this slightly rough in places but the bonnet's going to be on here and the front panel is going to be on there so you're not going to see any of this. Um, this is the little front cross member piece, it still needs to be PVA sealed. I only remembered about that when I finished up. Seat base is now PVA sealed and um, the back of the seat, the motor closing panel, sorry the centre heatings come on there, and the rear in arches and the two dumb irons all done and there's my grey primer setting. Interestingly I run out of PVA so this uh, clear PVA is what I've used here, 2.49 for the bottle. It actually seems to dry a lot quicker than the old stuff so that's only a good thing. So there you have it, all cleared up for another session. These are nearly all sealed, a little bit to do here and a little bit more to do on the dumb irons. Then I'm going to have to prime all of this and then start painting. I think the seat base and back are probably going to be black actually, um, or maybe a little grey or maybe even just lacquer over the primer, I haven't quite decided. I suppose grey elephant hide would be more in keeping with the series one. Um, so decisions to make there, but still a little ways to go. The dumb irons will be primed and then painted silver to match the cross member and also the little sills under here. So still plenty to do and I keep refining little jobs along the way that I've forgotten to do. Um, I did say I would have a go at cutting this mesh. Now I got this off eBay and interestingly the little cross wires aren't welded together if you can see that you can actually separate them. So the whole thing is just held together under its own tension, which is okay, I think it still look good, but I'm just gonna have to be careful how I cut it so that it doesn't all ping apart and make a bit of a mess. Wonder if I can strategically put a little bit of glue in to hold it all together. That's a question for another time. Um, meanwhile, my son has just gone to sleep upstairs so I can't make too much noise. So there you have it, another installment on this Toylander One build series. This is part nine of the series and as you can tell the bodywork is nearly complete and I'm really looking forward to moving on to the mechanical side of it, making the axles, the drivetrain and getting all set up and wired up. So the end is in sight and the aim is to get this finished for next Christmas. Um, you're seeing this in early January of 2020 um, and so I wish you all a very happy new year. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. There's lots more stuff coming in this new year. Um, maybe even a new car in the garage. I can't divulge any more than that, but thank you all for your attention. Like I said, hit the subscribe button, give me a like. I reply to all my comments and I really appreciate all your input. Thank you all for your attention in the last calendar year. And I look forward to sharing more action with you in the end coming. Cheerio now.